with more on the Palestinian bid for semi-statehood. We're joined now by Steve McDonald. He is the Associate Communications Director for the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. He is here in our Toronto studio. Um, what do you make of Stephen Harper's argument there? Has he articulated the issue quite correctly that this would be tantamount to a circumvention of the peace process? Well, I would have to agree, and I, I think it's important to note also that the opposition liberals have taken the same position, and that is that there is only one route to resolving the issue of whether whether we have a, a Palestinian state, what the borders would be, and that is through peace negotiations with Israel. Israel has publicly committed to a Palestinian state. The Israeli people, by a wide margin, support in, in pulling data the establishment of a Palestinian state. The important missing piece here is that that state needs to be established on a basis of peace. This is the position of international law and this is the position of both the international community and signed agreements between Israelis and Palestinians. Well, the NDP seems to also agree with the two-state solution. However, um, they're critical of this uh, position that the government is taking, uh, making the point uh, that, look, if you cut off aid, as Mark just noted, um, and take other measures, you're actually going to strengthen Hamas. Well, to my understanding, the government hasn't announced any, any kind of actions to that extent. But I do think there's an important point that your reporter in Ottawa raised, and that is that Canadian taxpayers give the Palestinian Authority hundreds of millions of dollars in aid. It's important for Canadian values and Canadian expectations to at least be reflected in those donations. And one expectation, which I think is very minimal, is that the Palestinian leadership at least commit to good faith negotiations with Israel. Israel has uh, a standing offer for uh, direct negotiations without precondition for the purpose of achieving peace in a Palestinian state. For the past four years, the Palestinian leadership has refused to enter into direct talks for all but about one month of that period. It's time for the Palestinian Authority to do something that's actually in the best interest of the Palestinian people, and that is to sit down with Israel and, as the Prime Minister said, negotiate a peace agreement. What about the other point uh, that the NDP is making, that the Prime Minister's position and, and John Baird's message today at the UN is actually going to upset other moderates in the region? Well, uh, to be honest, I don't think that's the case. I think what uh, the moderates in the region need to understand is that they can't have it both ways. They can't tell their own people that will refuse to compromise with Israel, will refuse to negotiate, and tell the West, uh, we're ready for, for peace, we're ready for statehood. Their actions need to match their rhetoric. And the problem we now face is that the Palestinian leadership is divided between two factions. One faction devoted to the destruction of Israel, this is Hamas, and the other faction is devoted to destroying the peace process, this is Mahmoud Abbas and Fatah. And it's time for Mahmoud Abbas to demonstrate that he truly is interested in peace, and the only way he can do that is by pursuing direct talks with Israel. Um, do you take exception to the position of um, some of our other Western allies? Uh, we just noted a moment ago the UK is supporting the bid, but conditionally. It's saying, look, um, as, as long as Palestinians agree uh, to continue on with talks, and as well uh, not have sort of status at the international court where they can uh, pursue charges against Israelis, right. that they would be supportive of this bid. Is that a reasonable position for the UK to take? I don't think it's particularly reasonable, and, and the reason I say that is because all it does is encourage this fantasy on the part of the Palestinian leadership that it can somehow achieve statehood without making peace with the Jewish state. It's important for your viewers to understand that 65 years ago today, the United, the United Nations voted to support the establishment of two states in the region, one Arab and one Jewish. The Jewish community supported that decision. The, the Arab world overwhelmingly rejected that decision and declared war on the nascent state of Israel. Uh, the Palestinian leadership and the surrounding Arab region has been ever since then dedicated to uh, in various forms the destruction of Israel uh, or at least refusing to make peace with Israel in the case of Fatah. This is unacceptable and it's important that the Palestinians understand that they cannot achieve a state unless they make peace with the Jewish state. Well most uh, observers seem to agree that today this bid is likely to go through, uh, that the Palestinians will have the two-thirds required of of uh, votes that they need for this to pass. So then what? What happens now if that indeed is the case? What what are the implications for the peace process? So the foremost implication of today's vote is that it'll actually do nothing to change the situation on the ground. In, in the West Bank, Fatah is ruling, and in, in Gaza, Hamas is ruling. Until these factions can effectively govern not only the situation on the ground in these territories, but the relationship between the two of them, and commit to direct negotiations with Israel, unfortunately what happens at the UN won't change the situation on the ground for the average Palestinian, who, by the way, I, I believe deserves better than this. Thank you, Mr. McDonald. Thanks. Steve McDonald is the Associate Communications Director for the Center for Israel and Jewish Affairs. And that brings us to our daily question. Is the United Nations biased against Israel? Tell us what you think at sunnewsnetwork.ca.